just as a point of contrast to healthy looking three, four year old trees here in the foreground. Compare that with uh, the neem plantation, which is about uh, five years old. And uh, all the work that went into that, raising the seedlings in the nursery, planting them out and whatever watering was done. Okay, here we have Sule Labo, and Sule has uh, quite an impressive stack of wood here that he gets from trimming these trees. Now this is not just for himself, he's got a couple brothers, he's got two wives, so it's for uh, an extended family. They have about 10 fields altogether, making up uh, probably close to 20 hectares of land. But he gets uh, this wood just from trimming these trees like you see in this field. Yeah. I've just been corrected here, it's not just that one pile, but we see off in the distance another wood pile there. And uh, right over here is another wood pile. This is all from this one man's, uh, or this one extended family's field. What else were you going to say, Tony? Well, just that before he started this natural regeneration, it would have been impossible for him to stack up so much wood because uh, the, the trees would never have gotten beyond the height of, say, this little thorn tree close by here. Mm -hmm. So they would never have made the dry matter that you see there in the fields now. Okay. Well, Sule is going to explain uh, why he put his pile where he did. Okay. In the past, this spot was impossible to farm, even with the steel plow, because it was a hard pan. So he deliberately uh, stacked his wood pile on the hard pan, and during the year that it sits there, the winds come, and uh, as they pass over the wood, the sand carried by the wind is deposited. Like this pile here deposited inside the wood so when he takes his wood off he's able to farm or plow inside that sand that's deposited. Um, what, what he didn't mention is any leaves and some of the smaller sticks that are in that pile will get eaten up by the termites and you can see them forming the crust here and, and that's also very important in soil forming and it helps to break up the hard pan as they as they tunnel through the hard pan air can get in and eventually moisture Naga is encouraging him to leave some to become proper trees. And uh, I also asked him, the ones that you harvest, are they just for the use of your home? Or do they, do you have something to sell as well? And he said, so far all he's done is it's uh, for firewood, for fencing material, for that roofing, and also for the grain stores. In the past, you'd have to go out to the bush, and there's nearly nothing left there. So this is provided for all his needs in the home, without without moving off his farm. So it's okay, here we have Habu Dauda. And Tony, I'm going to ask you to translate for us. Uh, how many trees has uh, he allowed to grow on his field? Two thousand and seventy three. Two thousand and seventy three. That's but he's he's counting in this just the ones that are two years older or more, not not the younger ones yet. Just the ones that are two years older. And so he plans to increase the number. He wants to increase the number because Places like this space here, it's too open for him. Uh huh. And then, uh, has he done much harvesting? Uh, of the of the 
In terms of what he considers harvesting, he's had enough for his fences and for repairing his house roof. But I, I tried to make him clarify what he said. So whenever they, whenever they pin the lower branches, this scrappy stuff that grows on the edge, he uses that for firewood too. Okay, he hasn't uh, harvested any big trees like this though, completely. He, he doesn't do that. Not yet. Yeah. Well, I don't think he intends to either. <laughs> he, he doesn't really want to completely chop it out from the base mm -hmm. and unless unless he's really pushed for a big beam for his roof uh -huh. but otherwise he plans to just use upper branches once the trees are bigger yeah. now the government rewarded this man uh, I understand mm -hmm. can you tell us about that can you tell us about that so the government rewarded him for the, for his work with trees. They gave him a donkey cart. They gave him a plow, uh, watering cans, shovels, rakes, and buckets, <laughs> and and three bags of fertilizer. <coughs> Because they try, they're trying to encourage this type of work, and and that's he was one of the first ones to really put into practice what we were teaching on natural regeneration. So at that time, his farms really stood out compared to the others. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Okay, Tony, what do we got here? This is Habu's uh, preferred system of management. He would rather let the tr the tree grow and become a proper tree, harvesting upper branches. Than, than cutting the tree at the base. Um, most farmers are still at the stage where they cut the tree out at the base once it's any size. And for that reason, we still don't have a lot of bigger trees to show in this area. But uh, Habu's been leaving trees like this since about 1983-84. And that's why on his farm he has a lot more larger trees. Tony, some of these trees are getting pretty big. And uh, so they can start harvesting some nice pieces of wood for poles and also for for firewood. Uh, what do you think about the potential, Tony, for uh, actually competing with the Alhajis that harvest wood out of Bab and Rafi for selling in Marathi? Is there any possibility that these guys could actually organize themselves and, and sell firewood in Marathi? I think it's a great possibility to put the Alhajis out of business. Um, if, if all the farmers, or even half the farmers, were leaving the trees to become three or four year old the way Habu has, and uh, just harvesting the branches rather than cutting, cutting them off at the base, uh, and also if they organized to have a central spot where they took their wood to and had fixed prices, uh, I, I, I think they could put the people out of business that are going and destroying the bush, the, the uh, foray class A land. Perhaps it would be the same people that come and buy the wood, but at least it would be organized. It would be on a sustained yield basis. Now, at, at present, we haven't got to that stage. People are still only just becoming comfortable with the idea of trees on their land. And they're still unsure about the idea of leaving mature trees on their farm. So each one year or two years, they're still harvesting what they left in their field. But as more and more people get to see that uh, Habu's millet yields, his sorghum yields aren't decreasing when he has these big trees. I, I believe that they too will start leaving their trees and only harvesting the upper branches rather, rather than chopping them off at the base. Now you can see why uh, these guys are such good foresters. They've been to Oregon.